Hey guys, today I wanted to do a quick belated 2020 planner stack video. I had filmed one of these to show at the beginning of December that I was gonna put up in the beginning of 2020, but I went home for the holidays, didn't bring all my planners with me, and just ended up doing a lot of uh, playing around with some other ideas, and the stack totally changed. So. Not committing to all these for 2020. I guarantee a lot of these will change except for probably my Hobonichi cousin and this guy here. But I just want to show you what I have been using for the last three weeks, that last week of December and the first couple weeks of 2020. So the first planner I have is a Hobonichi Weeks. I do not use this as a planner, really. I actually use this as more of a journal. But this is something I started in 2019 and I'm bringing into 2020 because it works so well for me. And essentially I use the weekly pages as a line a day. So I write a quick blurb about what I do each day and then at the end of the week I do a rough summary. This is how I fill out my five-year journal. I travel a lot for work and I just want something that's a little bit more portable. So this is something that I don't mind tossing in my backpack or my luggage. It's got a pretty hard, hard cardstock type of cover and I do have the clear cover on cover that came from Hobonichi with this. Um, so I feel like it's pretty protected. And then this is a mega, so it comes with like 211 or 213 pre-numbered grid pages in the back and this is what I use as sort of my spiritual diary so it is a prayer journal when I go to church I will write down sermon notes if I'm listening to a podcast that's more of a spiritual nature I will write that down um, if I'm reading like the bible and something is resonating with me I will go ahead and write that as well so this worked really well for 2019 and I found that the number of pages was just Perfect. I use about a half a page a day at home and then on Sundays I'll use maybe one to two pages. So that worked out really well for me. This year the only change is in the beginning in this like future log type of spread. I'm tracking my daily weigh-ins and then I'm going to do my measurements at the top because I didn't end up using this in 2019. And then in the monthly pages I'm writing a daily gratitude so that these get used as well. And since I do keep these, the gratitude is something I would like to look back on. So I thought it made sense to move that into this planner. So it's a planner that I essentially use as a diary. Okay, so this is where things really kind of get uh, different from 2019 to 2020. And I'm going to kind of talk about these at the same time, but this is an A6 Stalogy and a Hobonichi Techo cover. I believe this is the 2019 version. It might have been 2018. I've had it for a while. I tried to use a Hobonichi Techo for work in 2019 and that just, it just didn't work. So what I have on the inside is an A6 Stalogy. And this is pretty much my bullet journal. So I do have bullet journal videos on my channel and I did set up a like term A5 journal um, in December to use for 2020, but I just have been craving something a little bit different. I don't know what it was exactly, but I just wasn't in love with what I was doing. I'm not sure that the Loic term is going to go away, but I've had a lot of fun playing with this notebook. I found I'm really enjoying the Stalogy paper, but I think it's because I'm so used to the Hobonichi Tomoe River paper that I find this actually to be quite forgiving. I'm still using my Uni Jet Stream and my Tombos in here, so I haven't quite jumped on the gel pen, gel pen bandwagon. The only thing I've really been disappointed with, and there's probably better pen tests online than what I'm going to show you, is some of my darker Zebra Mild Liners uh, pretty much bled through to the point where that isn't something I would consider using unless you're going to like tape two pages together. but. I'm still setting this up. I haven't transferred everything into it that I currently have in my Loic Term bullet journal. I'm not sure if this is going to stick. And if I am liking this, I will probably still recreate my monthly spreads in the Loic Term for this channel as well, just because I think the A5 is a more accessible size. And I think more people would enjoy seeing how to kind of take some of these ideas and themes that are still really minimal and set them up in a light term. So we'll see, I might end up sticking with both, but I'm having fun playing around with this. I didn't get this notebook in until 
like January 6th. So not even in this for a week for me to tell you if I'm gonna, if it's gonna stick or not, but I've enjoyed sort of the challenge on rethinking sizing. It's still five millimeter grid, so same like overall square of uh, size as a Loic term, but the page itself is A5. So you get, instead of it being 26 by 37 squares per day, it's 19 by 26. So it's quite a bit smaller, but you do get 368 pages. And I almost think I could get a full year in here if I really wanted to, but trying this out for, you know, the first part of 2020 and we'll see if it sticks or not. Next, oh, guys, this is, this is pretty much my main planner. It has been my main planner since middle of December and this is an A6 or a Stell Scarlet in the colorway shadow box, which is the black on black. This is a rings planner, guys. Rings planning is something that I just keep going back to year after year. My first planner person planner was a Filofax original that I picked up in like 2013, maybe 2014. And that's what got me through college and the first part of my adult life. And I've been playing, you know, with various planners ever since. But I will do a separate flip through and kind of just a talk, you know, talk through video of all my inserts and how I'm using this. But this is pretty much my main planner. And the reason I keep coming back to rings is to me, rings feel very functional. They're really easy to customize. You can find a ton of inserts online, both printed and printable. You can make your own. If you want to pop something in your planner, like a wedding invite, you just throw it in a punch and then you can put it directly into the week. But I've got my trackers in here currently along with monthly pages. I went ahead and put the full year in here weekly pages and then the daily pages and the dailies are kind of what are making this the most functional for me the way i'm using these currently is heavily inspired by randy plans here on youtube and instagram so i will put her information down below but these are on a peanuts planner co insert but the thing about rings that really make them functional for me is that i focus a little bit more on the to do's and that system of planning versus the memory keeping. Rings are very transactional feeling to me, meaning once I'm done with the page, I just pop it out and I get rid of it. I don't keep my inserts. I've never kept my inserts. I'm not the kind of person that would purchase another organizer just to keep, you know, 2020 on the shelf at the end of the year. And I don't put them in like a, an accordion folder because I know I won't look at them again. So once I get through the end of the week, the end of the day, the end of the month, I will take anything that I want to keep from these inserts, move it into my archive planner, and then remove the page from my life. <laughs> and so this is really focused on all my pre-planning, my daily to-dos, my weekly to-dos, and sort of getting things done. Again, not entirely sure how long I will stick with the system, but I was secretly using rings for about four months in 2019 and I just keep going back to it. So I think this is the year that I'm just kind of coming clean that I like rings to track my daily to-dos. Speaking of my archive, I have my Hobonichi cousin. Have no fear, this baby isn't going anywhere. I love this planner. I fell in love with it in 2019. In 2019, my goal was to use one planner for the entirety of the year as best as I could, and the Hobonichi cousin allowed me to do that pretty seamlessly. I'm not planning on changing anything really on how I am using this. I'm still going to do my indexing in the beginning, my highlight of the day, and my monthlies. My weeklies essentially will look the same as well. It's just not gonna be the main planner that sits on my desk all the time, at least for the month of January. Right now, my rings, A6 rings, is sort of the one that's sitting on my desk at the front of the day. But what I'm planning on doing in here is I will still pre-plan my week, set it up just like I always have been doing. But instead of checking things off as I go in here, I will probably reference my rings and then at the end of the day go back and if there's anything in there that I want to memory keep or any additional to do's that I want to remember I will go ahead write them in here check them off etc. I love having a weekly planner archive one because 
this is my hobby. This gives me, you know, time to relax, play with stickers, decorate. I enjoy going back and remembering the little things. But something that I've always sort of struggled with is I've never really understood memory planning because I'm not a big scrapbooker or anything like that. But what I recognized in 2019 is that I reference previous weeks all the time. I need to remember when I did something, when did I last get that oil change, when did I start that new skincare product, how many bottles am I going through a year, does it make more sense to stock up on a sale, things like that help me a ton. I will remember a birthday, I'll go back and review my cycle. There are a ton of little things that kind of get written on these pages that I never realized I was going to need to remember and probably could write down elsewhere, but having it in this format gives me that weekly context, puts me back in the same headspace that I was when this week happened and I can find all those little things. So this week I'm doing a, a little bit more plan as you go. So today is Thursday, so I will sit down, plan, here this morning and then at the end of the day I will reference my A6 and just sort of fill in what I did get done, any other memories that happened throughout today and sort of keep them in sync on a day by day basis. My daily pages aren't changing for my setup video. I'm still putting my collections, my commonplace, my reference, all those lists that aren't necessarily daily planning, I will put on my daily pages and then I'm journaling every day here on the right hand side of the page. So that's not changing at all. I'm still in this notebook every single day. It is sort of taking that A6 stylogy or my bullet journal and my A6 rings and it's putting it all together in one place. I do recognize that I could do everything that I wanna do in just this planner, but really I've just been craving a little bit of a change for 2020. I wanted to try new things and I was kind of looking for something that was just a little bit more portable. And so for me, the A6 size is a lot more of like an everyday carry size. It's easier to pop in my bag and it's just a little bit of a different way of looking at things than I was doing it in 2019. So still absolutely love this planner. It might be my main planner next month. I have no idea, but for now I'm enjoying sort of using this as my archive and daily journal and then playing around with the A6 size for everything else. The last thing that I want to talk about that I'm trying this year is the Erin Condren Daily Petite Planner. I 100% blame Julie Plans for <laughs> making me purchase this, but this is what I'm trying to use as my work planner. Uh, I don't think I could necessarily use this as my daily planner because I work kind of crazy hours throughout the week and the weekend. Uh, is where I get my things done. This is like when my life gets put together and to do that on one page with only like nine to do's per day, not gonna cut it for me. But I think for work, this could work really well. It's actually quite larger than I thought it was gonna be. Like this is essentially an A5 notebook. Um, when I look at them online, they look much closer to a B6. So it kind of surprised me, but it does give you plenty of room to write everything down and really what my plan is is I'm going to do my schedule write down my meetings events and appointments and then just the things that I need to get done for work every day right here and I think in the hexagon what I've been kind of doing is like a big work event so if there's a major issue that I need to remember something that I learned a quick tip and trick or something like that that's what I want to put here so at the end of the quarter I can flip through and see like I learned a little something new every day or there was something important about work to mark every day. In 2019 I did work stuff in an A5 uh, rings planner which worked fabulously because I do find that I need a lot of notes pages but in 2020 I'm trying to be a touch more digital with my note taking for work so that I've always got it and it's a little bit easier for me to reference export and send off to my teammates at work so this is just to kind of give me a focus jump point every day for work so if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments down below I will attempt to address them, I understand that this is not the most streamlined system, but sometimes repetition just 
works well for me. It's how I think and it's how I plan and I'm enjoying playing with all these planners this month. And as always, it is subject to change. If you have stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.